show of hands, who here has not heard of the Free State Project before? Or doesn't really know anything about it? So everyone's, everyone's heard of it. Has, anyone, has everyone here heard that we triggered the move earlier this year? Everyone. OK, great. No? Oh, a couple, a couple heads nodding. So my name is Matt Phillips. I am the new uh, president of the Free State Project. I hate talking behind podiums, so I'm going to stand in front here in very casually style. Um, I just took over from the old the former president, Carla Garrick, uh, in March of this year, uh, right after we uh, did what we called triggering the move. So the Free State Project is a, a movement to recruit 20,000 libertarians to all move to the state of New Hampshire. And in uh, February of this year, uh, the day after Groundhog Day, in a, a, a day that is now forever immortal, memorialized as Porcupine Day, we got the 20,000th signer. Uh, so we have 20,000 people who have pledged to move to New Hampshire within five years, uh, of whom 2,000 have already moved in advance, like a couple of the folks here sitting up in front. Oh, no, you guys were already here. You guys were already there, so. Um, and 2,500 people uh, uh, who already lived in New Hampshire who signed the same uh, statement of intent um, that we all signed when we moved. I moved up about uh, three years ago. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly uh, run through a little bit of the history of the Free State Project and then tell you about uh, some of the, um, you know, the, the triggering the move uh, this year and some of the great press we've gotten. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about the uh, plan for the next couple of years uh, to, to finish out achieving our mission of 20,000 movers. Uh, and then I'll just open it up for questions because um, uh, there's a lot to cover and it sort of will depend a little bit on what you guys want to hear about. So, so the idea for the Free State Project um, uh, came from a gentleman who, uh, named Jason Sorens. Now, uh, Jason and I actually knew each other. Uh, we interned together at the Cato Institute in 1997. Um, so in 2001, he wrote an article that basically said, hey, instead of losing all the time as, as libertarians in all the, the various places where we live, what if we concentrated our efforts? What if we got 20,000 people, uh, just back the envelope calculation, 20,000 people to move to one low population US state? And there were several that were uh, selected from Alaska, Wyoming, uh, here in Nevada. Uh, in 2003, um, they, uh, a bunch of people who had taken that idea and ran with it, uh, voted uh, amongst the people who signed up to do this, and they voted for uh, New Hampshire. So in 2003, New Hampshire was, was selected as the destination, and uh, the, the, the effort, you know, the, um, the race was on to get 20,000 um, signatures, uh, people pledging to move so that we could then uh, trigger the move. So nobody had to move in advance, nobody had to be that, that first one, uh, the only one. Um, it, was, it wasn't until we got 20,000 people to all agree to, to to participate that anyone had to move. Uh, but what we've seen over the last uh, 13 years now is uh, 2,000 people already moved in advance. Uh, they didn't want to wait for the 20,000, it seemed like, especially in the last couple of years. Like, it was going to happen eventually. Um, but in the last 10 years, we've uh, since people have started moving there, we've seen a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of little victories. Um, in uh, 2010, the state budget was reduced by, uh, by about 11% uh, with the help of some of the free state or legislators. Um, we uh, deregulated all, all the knife laws, so there's, there are no more uh, laws regarding knives on the books in New Hampshire. Uh, the former President Carla Garrick was arrested filming the police uh, and took the case all the way up to the Supreme Court, who um, ruled in her favor and set the precedent that um, we, uh, private citizens do in fact have the right to record the police. Um, there's been a lot of interesting things with, uh, with uh, school choice, uh, with, there is a um, uh, business tax credit that you can get as a business uh, where you can save something like 80% of your taxes if you, um, you know, give the money instead to a, a charter school. Um, there's another case that's actually just uh, started up in the last year. Uh, one of the towns uh, in New Hampshire is actually a the school board is led by uh, one of the Free State or a woman who's on the board of the Free State Project actually. actually the town of uh, Croydon in New Hampshire decided they wanted to send some of their kids to a private school saving the town $4,000 per student per year. And the uh, State Department of Education sued them and said, no, you can't do that. Uh, the injunction was um, not, uh, not given uh, in the initial ruling, and that court case is now uh, gonna be ongoing. But um, there's hope there that, that if uh, the ruling uh, stands, that towns in New Hampshire will actually have the right to, to, send, to spend public money, public town money on 
private schools, which would save a ton of money and also really crack wide open a school choice there. Um, there's a bunch of other, I'm just gonna check my notes really quick here because there's a huge list of, of things um, that I want to uh, toss out there as, as little wins that we've had. iPhone is very secure. Oh, God, come on. Uh, oh, here's, a, here's an interesting one. 9-11 uh, immunity, if you're overdosing on heroin or one of your friends is, you can call 911 uh, and uh, they will come and um, they're not allowed to carry Narcan. Um, so they will come and you are immune from prosecution for you or, or, or your friend. Um, try and uh, you know, help the people that, are, that need help there. Um, we just repealed our certificate of need law uh, that took, took, uh, took effect this year that should help out the, uh, the medical sort of situation. We have medical and marijuana. Um, it's not widely implemented yet, but um, we are on the path there. Um, jury nullification, this is a really big one. Uh, uh, Juries have the, uh, prosecutors have the right to, to, to um, have juries informed of their right to, to nullify a law. Uh, that means that even if um, the defendant did the, quote, crime, if the jury feels that the law is not actually a moral uh, law, that the, act, the action undertaken should not be a crime, then they can rule innocent. Um, and the prosecutor, prosecutor, I'm sorry, the, the defense attorney can, uh, can argue that in, in court. Um, uh, here's a fun one, the uh, first public library in the country to run a tour node uh, up in uh, northern New Hampshire. Uh, they actually got a letter from uh, Homeland Security to the local police department notifying them of this dangerous situation that uh, library patrons were surfing the, uh, the web anonymously, if you can believe that. And uh, they actually shut it down and then uh, a whole bunch of uh, activists showed up and they uh, had a library board meeting and they agreed unanimously, no, why, why did we turn it off? No, turn it back on and it is now, uh, now up and running, so. Um, so there have been a lot of, uh, a lot of victories there, um, both for in-system activism and out-of-system activism. Uh, a lot of free staters get elected to the uh, state, uh, state house, um, New Hampshire state legislature is the third largest in the English-speaking world. We have 400 state reps, and so it's really easy to get elected as a, as a state rep. The average state rep has only about 3,000 constituents and spends anywhere from zero to uh, maybe 500 or $1,000 buying some yard signs, and uh, that's how they uh, So currently we have about 18 free staters um, that are in the state legislature. They get elected mostly as Republicans, sometimes as Democrats. Um, none as Libertarians yet that I know of. Um, so there's, um, and, and they tend to work with conservatives on some issues, with the liberals on, on some other issues, like uh, when it comes to the drug war or privacy issues. Um, and uh, <laughs> the, uh, there's a lot, so there's a lot of in-system activism. There's a lot of out-of-system activism too. There's um, people that are uh, you know, trading uh, for goods and services for Bitcoin. Um, there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurial activity. Uh, there's a couple of companies called, uh, one's Library, LDRY. They're like Netflix, but blockchain. Uh, there's another company called Open Bazaar, which is uh, a decentralized, uh, it's sort of like Silk Road, but decentralized, so there's no centralized server that stores anything. Uh, it's just stored on all the different nodes in the network, so you can't shut it down. Um, we had the, uh, one of the first uh, uh, Bitcoin ATMs was, uh, was started in uh, New Hampshire, and um, had, they have since actually left the country because of the fear of federal, uh, federal regulation, which is sad. But, um, so there's a lot of, of, of entrepreneurship that's going on there. Um, anyway, so all leading up to earlier this year, we finally uh, got the 20,000th signature. Um, and then that was right before we had our first, first we have two uh, annual events. Um, Liberty Forum happens every February. Uh, this year was, uh, was a record uh, attendance for that. We had Edward Snowden Skyping in from, uh, from Russia. Um, we had a former New Hampshire Republican Governor Craig Benson came to talk. Uh, interesting story about him that I didn't know until, uh, until this year. He, um, he was a governor of New Hampshire in 2002, and he actually came down to New York City for a Free State Project event before we had selected New Hampshire to promote New Hampshire as, as the appropriate destination for the Free State Project. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was down in Orlando for the Libertarian Party National Convention, and I learned that Gary Johnson, also Republican governor at the time, was promoting New Mexico as the destination for the Free State Project. 
um, which I, I didn't know. Gary Johnson uh, also is uh, signed up as a friend of the Free State Project. Uh, he's a big supporter of ours. Um, so we had Liberty Forum, and um, then we uh, just also a couple weeks ago finished our summer annual event called Pork Fest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Um, had about 1,500 people up in uh, northern New Hampshire uh, camping and uh, staying in RVs and uh, a motel. We had a whole bunch of people come up there, uh, including Angela Keaton from Anti-War, and uh, Reason Magazine uh, had a whole bunch of their people there. Uh, Charles Koch Institute was there, AFP. Um, Jeffrey Tucker, uh, Alice Society uh, had a bunch of people there. Um, they're one of our regular uh, regular sponsors. Uh, SFL uh, had, had a couple of folks there. Um, so it was a real good time, and uh, we do that every year. We're doing that again next year. And um, so the plan, the plan going forward um, is that we are going to be contacting um, all of the 20,000 signers and uh, telling them that, hey, the, the move is triggered, and when are you moving, and what do you need? Do you need resources? Uh, do you need to find a job? Um, can we connect you with uh, you know, some activism? Can we connect you with, um, you know, socially? Can we uh, give you some leadership training? Um, and for every, every signer that we can't track down, their phone number's no good, the letter gets returned to sender, the email bounces, we can't track them down on social media, um, that just means that's one more person that we're going to have to get, you know, in addition to the 20,000 uh, signers to, to show up to move. We've, we're already well into the second batch of 20,000 uh, signers, though, so uh, I'm not too worried about finding the people. It's mostly just about um, uh, convincing, you know, notifying everybody that, hey, the move is on, and, um, you know, what, what can we do to, su to support everyone uh, in doing that? Um, so, uh, doesn't like my left thumb, I guess. Sorry about that. Um, 